the 5th of December 1988. Yeah, I remember it well. Times used to be bloody tough for batsmen. And Second ball I faced from Kirtley Ambrose. I zigged when I should have zagged and hit, hit one of those cracks with the whacker and came back at me. Yeah, hit me about there and broke it into five pieces. When you look back at like the Bodyline series and the way that Harold Larwood got hold of Burt Oldfield, and some of those pictures and the footage are, are just absolutely shocking. And there was Mike Gatting getting smashed in the face by Malcolm Marshall. That style of cricket through that time was, was definitely a brutal style of cricket. Launches this one. Well, it's gone all the way. Is it a better time to be a batsman now than ever before in cricket? Oh, I think there's no doubt in the last period of time, and the stats will probably back that up. You know, smaller boundaries, bigger bats. The thickness of the bat nowadays, the edge, is probably the same thickness of what the whole bat used to be back in the day. This is my Grey Nichols giant from my last couple of years of first class cricket. When you stand next to a modern cricket bat, that edge is, is probably less than a half of the edge of a modern cricket bat. As bat makers, we're trying to make them as big as possible, develop sort of bigger edges and bigger middles. Since these ones were made, we've dried out the, the wood a little bit more in manufacturing and pressed them a little bit different. It's about trying to get wood out where you can, improving the balance, which, you know, you take a little bit out of the toe, a little bit out of the top, and you try to keep it right in the bulge. They're heavier as well, though. Well, I'm a firm believer if you can lift a three-pound three bat and you can swing a three-pound bat, then by all means. Chris Gale shouldn't get penalised for being strong enough to handle a three-pound two bat. The big hits from the likes of Chris Gale left some questioning how big was too big. Eventually you'd get bats sort of uh, 50 mil edges, uh, really, really massive bats and it became a little bit unfair bat, bat to ball. So the ICC stepped in and decided that these big bats were pushing the, uh, the benefit to the batters a little bit too much and there wasn't that much there for bowlers. So uh, they brought in a gauge basically that umpires have and basically your bat just has to fit through it. And that's the, the maximum sort of size and you basically just fit that through tightly. <laughs> when you see these players, the ball glances off the edge and ends up halfway back in, in one of the stands. It really changed the way the game's played, where the close fieldsmen stand, how batsmen don't use their feet and they allow the bat to do all the work rather than their footwork and their precision. You can be imprecise with a modern cricket bat. I know bowlers will say that they're still too big, but people love watching the Sixers being hit. After having it so good for so long, the tables have now been turned. What do the bowlers think? It's like a lot harder, I guess, now for the bowlers. It, it is a batter's game, I, I do believe that. When the batsman hits hard, you can see the umpires in all their protective gear, helmets. We've seen bowlers struck, serious injuries. The bowler's got no chance if one is smashed back at him. So if times are tough now, what does the future hold for bowlers? This is what bowlers are facing at the moment, and you have to develop new skills. When I came through, a Yorker was a Yorker. Now you talk about wide Yorker, straight Yorker, leg hole Yorker. A bouncer was a bouncer. Now you talk about slow ball bouncers. So these things have been added to the game because the bowler's gone searching for ways to counteract the batsman coming hard. Everyone thought that it was going to be the death of spin bowling. Now you look at the top. 10 rankings in, in T20 cricket, maybe even 9 out of 10 are actual uh, spin bowlers. So it, it just goes to show that um, you know, the game always evolves uh, and, and players find a way to be you know, successful. I think the game's great at the moment, the way that you know, the entertainment value that you get out of it, some of the innings that you see. I think from a spectator's point of view, uh, it's an exciting part of the game when you've got everyone contributing. That's what cricket's all about. So what's better for the future of the game? Never-ending sixes or a closer contest? This one's got an air hostess on it! Watch the ESPN Crick Info film series at ESPNCrickInfo.com.